question is, what are the luxuries in your life that you would be unwilling to live without? Next gen propane generator. Manually pump the water from my well and fill up the pressure tank. And so I'm gonna take one of these 55 gallon drums and I'm gonna fill it up with beans. I don't wanna become that monster that, that would do anything. I'm getting so fancy. I make fun of my wife all the time because she makes the most complicated cup of coffee that exists. And every now and then she, uh, she, she pulls me into the trap of being, um, of being fancy, you know? And I mean, I've had plenty of cups of coffee where I literally have the crushed up, barely ground up beans in a pot, poured hot water in it and just drank that without filtering anything at all. I just chew on the grinds a little bit. And I feel like a barista. <laughs> Caution, the boiling water is hot. <laughs> so fancy, man. Question is, what are the luxuries in your life that you would be unwilling to live without? Would you be unwilling to live without electricity? And have you done anything? Do you have any countermeasures in your, your setup to ensure that the electricity keeps on flowing if the grid should go down? I have minimal uh, ways to keep the electricity flowing in my house. Um, I'm more uh, on board of figuring out ways, alternative ways to do without it as opposed to being heavily reliant upon it no matter what. I just think that that's a longer term solution. Short term, yeah, definitely generators and all that kind of stuff, I think is is definitely the short term solution, you know, to keep food from spoiling the stuff that you've got in your refrigerators and freezers. I think that that's, that's a big deal and that's definitely something that should be considered. I'm about to overflow my coffee here. I think it's more important to have long-term solutions to, to problems. Yeah, having a generator so you can, you can fire it up and, and keep the freezer frozen until you can go through that stuff, at least I, I think is good just to not be wasteful. And some of that, that food you might be heavily reliant upon. And um, it can just continue life through short-term short events like storms and things of that nature, short-term power outages. You can continue your life fairly normal. Like my dad, for example, uh, power goes out, does not matter. He can fire up that generator, the TV still plays, refrigerator still going, AC, everything still rocking and rolling. And because it's important to him to be able to continue life no, the way he likes it, comfortably, no matter what. Again, short-term solutions to potentially long-term problems because eventually you're going to run out of fuel for that generator. And then, you know, the whole thing with generators, you got to maintain them and maintain the fuel and all that kind of stuff. I've got a propane generator that I haven't tried out yet, but I need to because it's, well, let's go look at it. Let's take our Joe. It's a nasty, dreary day. You're wondering why I'm inside. I'm almost never inside doing videos because I like, I'm an outside guy. I like being outside, but it's a nasty, dreary day. And man, I was just feeling like knocking out some inside chores. So let's go take a look at what I'm talking about. What I'm looking at here is the Alp Next Gen Propane Generator, 100% propane, portable inverter generator. 60 hour runtime on 20 pound tank, three hour runtime on a one pound tank, which is kind of nice, that sounds good to me. It is a thousand watt starting wattage, 850 watt running wattage. If you guys know anything about propane generators, feel free to enlighten me because I know nothing about propane generators. <laughs> so I'm gonna mess around with this little guy right here. And you know, I could potentially move this. I know it's not gonna run the whole house or anything like that. I have no illusions of that. But I could potentially move the thing around and keep one fridge going for a little bit, cool it off, and then move it to another one or something like that. And, and use it for the necessities. I've got another generator as well, but I just hate them. 
there's always something wrong with it if you don't you know run them on the regular and maintain them just small engines in general uh, are a pain in the neck if they're not regularly used so for that reason i think i'm i'm, I'm keyed in I'm, I'm liking the idea of this propane generator right here and i think it just might be a a good solution but anyway if you know anything about them leave that in the comments and let me know what your thoughts are this specific one right here have no idea no information on it whatsoever if you have used one of these please fill me in and, and enlighten me anyway getting back on subject what are some things that you can't live without that you refuse to live without if if the grid should go down for an extended period of time for me man i would love to be able to take a hot shower uh, i tell you what i've spent long periods of time dirty uh where i've been able to like you know bathe a little bit in the creek in the water in the swamp uh, I've been able to kind of splash off and clean off a little bit and I just craved civilization because I wanted a hot shower. I wanted food. I was really, really hungry for long periods of time and I, I just thought about food a lot, but man, that hot shower, whew, that's hard for me to give up and I would really like to continue that. Uh, as long as I possibly can. This is my hand pump right here. It's Excelsior hand pump. And what this does is it allows me to manually pump the water from my well and fill up the pressure tank that is in my little utility room right here. This is my original my original plumbing plans right here when I was first doing that. <laughs> I had to draw it all out so I didn't get confused. I knew where everything went, the 90s and the check valves and all that kind of stuff. Look at this awesome old pistol. <laughs> Man, this thing is really old. You could tell it was handmade. I don't know how old it is. It's percussion cap, so it's not real, real old, but it's definitely probably from the 1800s. Very, very cool pistol. But anyway, back on subject. Uh, so I've got a way to keep water flowing into the house, and we can flush the toilets. We can wash the dishes. We can do the basics. And we can take short showers, right? I mean, you could take a long shower if you got one of the kids down here rocking the hand pump which is totally cool. I'm willing, I am willing to make the sacrifice of my children pumping that, <laughs> the hand pump, so I can, uh, so I can take a long shower, but it's going to be a cold shower at the moment. I do not have a way if the grid is down. Well, I guess I could put the generator, hook the generator up to the, the water heater and we could do it that way, but it's, you know, that's not very efficient. And I would feel you know, I, I would be, I feel like I would be using up a precious resource such as propane, in an effort to take some a luxury like a hot bath. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, depending on what the situation is, if we know it's for the long haul, I definitely would just suck it up and take cold showers. But if I knew it was probably a relatively short event, like some sort of natural disaster or something like that, then I might uh, indulge myself and maybe hook up to our big propane tank. I get it. That's what I need to do is figure out how we can make a small portable generator like that easy to use with our large propane tank that we have outside. And while I'm on the subject, I get asked about it a lot, the, the question about the, uh, the hand pump. I get asked about the hand pump all the time. It's a shallow hand pump. It only works, it only pulls, it'll only lift water 30 feet, something like that, give or take. But it will pull water a long way, really long ways horizontally. And my well, fortunately, it's 300 feet deep. And a lot of people are like, well, it'll never work in my application because my well is deep. Yes, if your well is 300 feet deep and the water is 300 feet down, that shallow well hand pump will not work. But if your water table, if the water level in your well is near the surface, like mine is, it's like less than 10 feet down. If you drop a pebble into my well, it goes, you drop it and it goes bloop immediately in the water. If that's the case for you, then uh, then something an application like that this this hand pump will work so so it works quite well in my situation I haven't really had to use it other than I need to actually use it a couple times here and there to uh, to make sure that it's still functioning properly because if things sit for too long you know it is that when you put oil in you put mineral mineral oil in it to uh, make sure it doesn't rust and stuff like that if there's long periods without use need a relatively clean bucket. That one should go if we can get it apart. Why? It's always such a struggle to get buckets apart. 
Yeah. Man, it's like they glue themselves together. Son of a Buckets get stuck together. I, it's my own fault. I know not to stick them together like that because they get, they get stuck together. But I do it inevitably. And uh, it infuriates me when I can't get them apart. It's like this, you know, I, I feel like I, I'm, in, I'm entering in the world's strongest man competition when I have to, you know, <laughs> pull these things apart. Come on, baby. Let go. Oh, man, that's really stuck. All right, I gave up on those two. I've got a different one. So I've got these giant big pickle pickle barrels, 55 gallon pickle barrels. And so storage is always an issue for food. And, and back on the topic at hand is, you know, there, there's some things that you can and there's some things that you can't live without. Food is not a luxury, food is a requirement. So, so having a significant source of calories in some form or fashion, I think is really, really important. And the, and the standard rice and beans, I mean, that's good survival food, it is calories. It is, it, it is a complete protein if you combine rice with beans. So having a large quantity of rice and beans for those hard times, I think is just, it's just smart. It'll get you through the tough times until you can figure out something else, until you come up with a different plan, another, another plan of attack. So for storage reasons, I'm gonna take one of these 55 gallon drums and I'm gonna fill it up with beans. And I can store this outside of my house. And if I put it in a cool, dry place and I put it in mylar bags, which is what I was working on in there inside. I'm going to, I'm going to fill up those mylar bags with the uh, beans and I'm going to stick individual bags down in here. So all I have to do is open up the lid, reach down in there, grab one of those bags out and eat that one individual sealed up bag. And the rest of it can stay inside of the barrel. And it just makes it more manageable that way. And if stored properly in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers, inside of a food grade barrel like this, kept at a steady temperature uh, with, low, with no moisture, being able to get to it or anything like that, it'll last for a long time. I've eaten 12 year old beans that have been stored in a similar fashion and it was absolutely fine. Righty, tidy, lefty, lefty Lucy. <laughs> never, never seen, can't seem to get that right. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Mmm, pickles. <laughs> Smells very pickly. <laughs> Extremely. Uh, and that smell, in my experience, because I, I haven't used pickle barrels like this, but I've used pickle buckets. And in my, in my experience, that smell really never gets out of it. Uh, that pickle smell is always going to be inside of the barrel. But that's okay because the food is stored in a mylar bag and it's not gonna come in contact with the barrel at all. So I think it's gonna be fine. But I do need to rinse these things out because they're kind of gross at the moment. I need to wash them, clean them, and stuff like that before I try to put any food inside of them. Maggie and the water hose are arch enemies. She hates the water hose. Every time I get it out, she gets very excited. <laughs> and then I squirt her until she runs away. She always comes back. She does the same thing, which is dangerous. She does it with a pressure washer and it's super irritating. I've been really trying to break her of that one, but I guess I'm not encouraging the behavior by playing with her with this one. <laughs> This is a mylar bag. It's a really big one 
which is great. Uh, but I'm gonna start filling it inside this bucket just to kind of manage it so I don't end up spilling beans all over the floor. What are some things that you can't live without? What are some luxuries that you just, you need? You know, do you need your phone? Do you need your technology? Do you need your, your TV, your show that you always like to watch, your movies, your entertainment, uh, your baseball, your football, your other sports balls, whatever it is? Uh, do you need that stuff? Do you, or do you refuse to give it up? Or are you at least gonna hang on to it as long as you possibly can uh, until they peel it out of your cold, dead, rigor mortis hands. <laughs> um, there, there's very few things that I can't live without, uh, or at least that I would be really hesitant to give up. Like I said, a hot shower uh, is, is one of them. I'd really, really enjoy a hot shower. You know, call me what you will. I don't like the cold shower thing. I just, it's one of those luxuries that I want. Um, uh, ease of cooking, ease of cooking indoors. I think that that's another one that's that's really important. We have a big propane tank, so if power goes out, grid goes down, we can still cook inside of our home pretty easily for quite a while, as long as we stay up to date, stay stay on top of filling up our propane tank. Uh, if you live in the city and you're on electricity and you cook with electricity, you're gonna have a much harder time, so you need to solve that problem in another way. I would like to have some sort of outdoor cooking area you know, on my porch or, or right outside, something covered so I can, even in bad weather, I can be out there and cook over an actual fire, whether that be, you know, charcoal or or, or wood flame. Uh, I would really like to do that. And that's, that's a project that I'll probably work on in the near future so I can have easy cooking, even if we have no propane and I'm fetching sticks or having the kids fetch sticks out of the woods, firewood to, uh, to cook our, our next meal, to cook the rice and beans that we're uh, storing away. There we go. In this bag here, in this Mylar bag, I've got 50 pounds of beans, which is approximately 52,000 calories um, based on a 2,000 calorie diet. That is 25 days worth of food. Obviously, you want more than just beans in your diet. I get it. But if we're talking strictly calories, uh, this is 25 days of food for one person. That's a lot of food, and that is a an insurance plan for hunger right there. I feel better having that stored up and ready to go if we should need it for some reason. Now, I'm not sitting on some giant mountain of food. Absolutely not. Um, I think that everybody should have a significant amount. I think three months, I think, well, really, I think one month supply of food, I think, is is critical. If you don't have a month's supply of food, you are wrong. You need to make that happen, and you can make that happen right now. It does not take that much money to get a one month supply of food for your family. And if you don't have that money, you need to figure out a way to make the money to buy that food. Because without food, man, I've seen, I've seen little kids that are shriveled up, wasted away, hollowed out, scrawny, just bones covered in a little bit of skin. And my children are not going to look like that. I refuse to allow that to happen. I will do everything in my power to make sure that that does not happen. I know what it's like to be starving. I know what it's like to go a long time without eating, and it is miserable. It is sad. It is a horrible, horrible existence, and I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to allow my family to go through that, and that's why I have invested in stockpiling a little bit of food. Again, it's not a mountain. I don't have, I can't feed the neighborhood, and I can't you know, uh, I can't have, I can't run a soup kitchen. I don't have any of that going on, but I've got enough for, for me and my family to make do for a short period of time until we can figure something else out. Hmm. I forgot about my coffee and it got kind of cold on me. That's, that's a drag. Hot coffee. Can you do without, is that a luxury you can live without? A hot cup of joe? Are you willing to give that up? You better stockpile coffee. You better do that. the whole beans. They'll last a lot longer. Don't buy the stuff that's already ground up. If you want to be drinking coffee in the apocalypse next to all your other Book of Eli survivors, machete-wielding 
survivors, then you better have some stocked up. Brad Becker's Inc. 305 Bell Park Drive, Woodstock, Georgia. That's where we get our supplies, like our, our bulk foods, rice and beans and that kind of stuff. And then these are oxygen absorbers and the Mylar bags. That's where those came from. They, uh, they're they good people. And I'm about to call them right now because I'm not sure how many oxygen absorbers I need to put in a really, really large bag like this. So I'm going to give them a ring and see what they say. All right, just got off the phone with Brad Becker's super nice people. Man, she was so nice. So if you ever get a chance to give Brad Becker's some business, I, that I'm, they're not paying me to do this. Nothing. I'm just a I'm just a uh, a consumer of their products. So if you ever get a chance to go to Brad Becker's and, and and gear up and stock up, please do so. They're really really nice people. But anyway. Uh, she said one would probably be good enough for a six gallon bag like this, but two just to be safe. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to crack open my oxygen absorbent pack with my on three EDC that is now available for purchase. I get asked about the on three EDC all the time. It's been out of stock for a little bit, but if you want an on three EDC, now is your time to get it. I think we're still in the pre-order stage, but go to bear forestknives.com and you can get yourself an on three EDC very similar to the one that I've been carrying for over two years now and it has been awesome I use it every single day just about and it has been a really really reliable knife uh, big enough to do all the knife things small enough to carry all the time with you without really being a burden you don't notice it's there anyway two oxygen absorbers in my six gallon bag right there Helps if you turn it on. This one's fancy. Look at that. It's got a digital temperature gauge, I guess. Neat. That good, good, and warm. And then we'll seal up our bag. And then we got 50 pounds of beans ready to go to sit and wait for a day that hopefully never comes. <laughs> A lot of people look forward to the apocalypse, I think, you know? And when I say apocalypse, I don't, I don't literally mean the apocalypse. You know, you know what I'm saying. The, uh, the major grid down event is what I'm talking about. A lot of people seem to look forward to it. I, however, am not one of those people. I hope that all of this is for naught. I hope, you know, 10, 20 years from now, I dig into this bag of beans for the sake of it not going to waste and for no other reason. <laughs> and then I could add some fresh to it, add some fresh beans to the supply in case that rainy day does come. You know, I, I just, I really am hopeful and I pray every single day that the good times keep rolling. And I, we've talked about this before in, in past videos, but man, I just, I, I, I do not look forward to the day when you flip the switch and the lights don't come on and they stay off for a long period of time. I don't look forward to, the times when uh, people become the monsters, you know, that we see in the movies and stuff, in these post-apocalyptic type movies. And I definitely pray to God that I don't become one of those. And that's why we do all of these preparations. That's why we do these things is so that we don't become the monsters. Because I was talking about this with a buddy today, and it's, it's just, it's, it's what would you not do to make sure that your kids don't starve? right? You're watching your kids, you're watching your little bitty babies, you're watching them shrivel up into nothing and you just get weaker and weaker. And it happens fast with little ones, with kids. Man, my son goes a day without eating and he, he, uh, he crashes hard. He goes from a crazy, wild, rambunctious kid that's 100 miles an hour all the time to feeling sick, very lethargic, just wants to lay down and do nothing. And yeah, I, I get it. It's just kind of a shock to his system. And he would he would kind of steady state a little bit. But with kids, with their fast metabolisms and their growing bodies without proper nutrition, man, they waste away really, really fast. So anyway, I, uh, I don't want to become that monster that, that would do anything to make sure his kids eat. And, I, I, and, and on that subject, I, I'd like to think 
I would like to think and I'd like to know that no matter what the situation is, I would be strong enough to always do the right thing and to not, uh, you know, prey on my fellow man so I can uh, take from him to feed mine. You know, I, I'd like to think that I'm strong enough to not do that and to always do the right thing no matter what. But am I? You know, I don't know. I've never been tested in that in that way. I can't, I haven't watched my kids starve, my wife starve. I haven't been there, I don't, so I don't know exactly how I'd react to that situation. I know I don't want to find out. That's for sure. I don't know what that's all about, but when you touch this one together, you ladies, you four or five ladies that watch my videos out there, tell me why it vibrates when you touch this one together. Uh, the other hair straightener, straight iron thing that I've used didn't do that. It wasn't nearly this fancy. I stole this from the upstairs bathroom. I couldn't find my cheap one. Why does it vibrate? That's weird. And then what will happen is if the oxygen, if I have a good seal and the oxygen absorbers are doing their good job, this thing kind of, it kind of vacuum packs itself and we can quickly figure out if we've got a good seal if that is the case if it if it see if it squeezes itself down sucks the air out of it it uh you know it's doing the job so after that we can fill up that big barrel once we get enough of them to fill up the barrel done we can we can throw them all in there or we can just do it one bag at a time you know it's nothing wrong with cracking into the thing if it's easy access you can just as you accumulate your, accumulate your stockpile of food you can just add one to it and add one to it and add one to it yeah, I know, rotation, stuff like that. But with really long-term food storage methods like this, not as big of a deal if it takes you, even if it took you a year to accumulate the stuff, it's not the old, one year older stuff on the bottom, not that big a deal. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave us a comment, any comment will do. Tell me what is the one thing the one luxury that you can't live without. Yes, we all need food and water and shelter and all that. I get it. But the luxuries. Hot shower right here. That's what I want. I want that more than any other luxury out there. I want a hot shower. What is your one luxury that you can't live without? Thanks, guys. See you next time.